I've devoured hundreds of vintage opening title sequences and VHS opener logos so you don't have to. So let's together pull apart this project file so you can see all my tips and tricks on how I get an authentic retro look in a digital world and how you can get 70s and 80s title design in just the click of a button. So if you haven't picked up Nostalgia 2 yet, the link is below. You've downloaded the file, we've double clicked it to unzip it, and then we've saved it to somewhere that we can find it. Let's start with Premiere first, and then we'll move on to After Effects. I've created a guide to Mogurt, so go and watch that first if you're unfamiliar. But in essence, add the unzip folder in the Essential Graphics panel like this, and it will load all of the titles as a library. Now you can scroll through the titles uh, and then as you pass your mouse over a title like this, you can see it'll play for you. So grab one that matches your vibe and let's just drag that onto the timeline. So let's change the text. Click on the title layer of your timeline to go from browser to edit in the essential graphics panel and then let's type, type whatever you want. Let's amend the size and even adjust the leading and the tracking. So under look, you can easily change the color. We can turn off the grain and texture layer uh, and we can decrease or increase the VHS overlay effect. So let's switch off the background layer to see the footage underneath. Alternatively, you can drag your footage into the media replacement box like this. Uh, let's toggle it and then you'll have a much more integrated look. To make these look authentically terrible, I have used a lot of layers and a lot of effects, so expect a slightly longer render time. Um, so let's hit enter and wait a few before we play it back. Most designers like myself have an abundance of patience, we're used to it, but linear editors, you just don't tend to need that patience. I'm pretty sure you'll be fine because I created these on a Mac Pro from 2013. Okay, the black cylinder. So just relax, you'll be fine. Some of the Mogurts have extra details such as color combos. We can scroll through a few of those here. Uh, there's also automatic resizing for some of them and other special little bits here and there. So click every button, make it yours. I've added a few film mats as PNGs. So let's drag those from your downloaded assets folder. We'll chuck them on top for an extra layer of authenticity. Plus there's a few text details Mogurts as well. Um, my favorite of those is these credits. There are 41 titles, 33 of which you don't need After Effects installed at all to use these Mogurts, just Premiere, okay? But there's eight of them in which you'll need After Effects installed, but you don't have to open After Effects. It just has to be somewhere on the machine. As you might've noticed, I have a few go-to processes, a few go-to effects that I use to create these retro looks. Um, they include glow and blur and chromatic aberration, jitter, grain, texture, frame rate, dynamic range and color are all questions I'll ask myself when creating a retro look. You know, imagining when it was recorded, what format that it's being played on. If you wanna see an in-depth video about my process, then why not comment about it below? So let's jump into After Effects where you can make even more minute and micro adjustments if you're that way inclined. You'll open the AE file and be met with this warning saying two files are missing. Let's just hit OK and then open the Assets folder. Right click on either file with the color bars, see these color bars, and select Replace Footage and then File. And then navigate to where you stored the unzip folder on your machine and in the Assets folder select the file. This will automatically relink the other file. Now, even though it's pretty unusual for After Effects, I actually suggest that you open the Essential Graphics panel. Even if you want to do things the true After Effects way, at least you'll be able to see which layers are likely using an expression 
to control them, which I'll explain in a minute. If you wanna follow my advice, when you open a title comp, also open the selected composition in the essential graphics panel. Like I said, just a suggestion, you can ignore me. So to change the text the old fashioned way, we can navigate to the text edit composition and type whatever we wanna type. And then let's change the font and let's also change the size. Now below the text layer here is a layer to change the color. Now you might notice one of my all time favorite expressions at work uh, where the anchor point is always locked to the middle of the text layer no matter if I change the font or if I change the amount of lines. Now it's something that really bugs me in After Effects when it just, the anchor point moves all over the place. So you won't need to use the align tool to center these layers. But of course, if you did want to get rid of this glorious expression, you select the layer, let's hit A for anchor, and let's scroll down uh, the anchor and we'll simply delete the code. But know that somewhere in the world, I'm shedding a single tear. Bonus tip. Some fonts I've used have extra cool little glyphs, such as ITC Avant-Garde, Bookman, and this cheeky Silk Sonic tribute is a font called Funky Dory. You can't access these extra letter versions in After Effects, so let's copy the type, and we're gonna open Illustrator. We're gonna hit paste in Illustrator, and let's select just a single letter. Now, if it has alternate glyphs, you'll see them once you hover over the letter. Okay, so once you're happy with the new version, let's copy it and then paste it back in After Effects. And just those little details making it look fire. So just like in Premiere, you can make changes to effects and toggle the background on and off using the Essential Graphics panel. But say you wanted to dive real deep. In your export comp, you'll also find a control layer, which is essentially the same as the Essential Graphics panel. So now you're looking at this comp thinking, it looks a little bit simple in here, how is that possible? That's because the shy switch is toggled. So if we toggle that, now you can see everything that's going on. In the pre-comps folders, you'll also find that the rabbit hole does indeed go deep. There's a lot of pre-comps. Now you can mess with every effect individually, but again, watch out for expressions of which there are many. To reveal all expressions, uh, use the shortcut EE -E, um, and then obviously delete any expressions that you don't need. So let's break some footage, all right? Navigate to the footage comp and throw your masterpiece in there. Now let's go back to our export comp. Uh, take a look at what happens when we turn off the background and we turn on the media replacement. I don't know if you noticed the numbers, but um, the expression is simply changing the opacity from zero to 100%. I thought, Maybe you'd find that interesting, but maybe you don't care. Anyway, again, we have film mats and details that you can drop and drag in. This time there is compositions. Okay, so what if you decide to export this for Resolve or Final Cut and you wanna put it over footage in there? So let's turn off the background and media replacement layers and we will add it to the render queue or to media encoder. The settings you wanna use is Apple ProRes 4444, 4, 4, 4. so four fours. Uh, with alpha um, and then that's all you need. Now you can drag it over whatever. Alternatively, if you're using Premiere, you can actually drag this composition directly onto your timeline. Okay, something that most don't take full advantage of is After Effects native 3D tools. So I'm not talking about fake 3D like bevels or 2.5D, I'm talking about the real deal. Here in this title, I've used a pre-comp as an environment layer. See the little um, globe icon? and this can create some bespoke reflections. So that's always fun to mess with and, and have a look at how I've done that. Bonus tip. Personally, I'd keep this project file as the master file and then just drag it into an After Effects project that I'm working on. This is something that I do all the time to keep things tidy. And it's also something I do all the time if I wanna steal an effect that I've created in the past and I don't wanna start from scratch. I would love to see what you guys create. So tag us on Instagram and remember, no matter how many followers you have, no matter how big the names are that you work for, you are loved and you are valuable. If you want to see any more videos about creating retro effects, then click one of these.